Hello there and welcome to The Dive and I hope you had a good Christmas. Uh, this is the new year so we're going to be bringing you lots more independent music and interviews. This week is no exception. Now back in the early 90s the Sneaker Pimps established themselves as a bit of a household name after losing their female frontwoman, which may be no bad thing, and gaining something of a new attitude, the Sneaker Pimps are back with their new album, Bloodsport. We went up to the ICA in London to do a bit of an underground uh, warts and all coverage of their first UK gig. Uh, they gave us a bit of an interview and performed some live tracks. This is the first part of that ordeal. Maybe then you wouldn't get so sick of me. Or maybe then you wouldn't get so sick of me. Maybe then you wouldn't get we're joined now just before they go on stage at the ICA by David and Liam. Hello, guys. <laughs> Hello. How Thanks for doing this. I know that you're rushed for time. First off, we are a little bit. But it's okay. <laughs> so, uh, let's start quickly. How long have you guys been going? Just so people know. Um, as sneaker pimps, we've been going since about '95. I'd say so. Yeah. yeah. But um, Liam and uh, Chris have been making sort of music together from about 90 onwards, something like that. Yeah. Sort of making dancey Since stuff. Since we were teenagers. Yeah, because you started off on a, on a far more technical tip, uh, minus the live instruments and the hassle that that brings. But that's that's right, we started off sensibly and then went down the circus route. Right, what, what made you, um, <coughs> firstly, want to, because back then it was, uh, very, even today it's ambitious, but back then it was really ambitious to want to mix live stuff with, with all the computers. Why did you want to do that? Um, it's, it's, the, it's the kind of feeling that something's going to go wrong on stage. I think that's, that's the best thing. It's the tightrope walk yeah. we love. Right, so you're doing it primarily for the, for the risk factor. Yeah, it's, it's seeing yeah. the pants. If you spend too much time in a studio, life becomes kind of hermetically sealed and yeah. just a dreadful bore. So it's good to go out and sort of let the music go out to people and see their faces and um, perform and show off and kind of try and... It's quite a feat to be able to pull off. I mean, watching your sound check here today, you know, we can see what sort of problems can happen as well. Mm. I mean, I'm quite surprised though. That the, the driving force is that it might all go wrong. So well, we, we have more than ever. We, we've, got, we've got visuals now as well, which this is we're debuting tonight. Yep. This and, is the first time that's, that's, that, that could possibly go wrong quite... We've only done it once. Right. I mean, I should say that you guys have actually been involved in film soundtracks. Yep. Yeah, already. You few. did um, Spawn and uh, Life yes. Less Ordinary. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is yeah. that something, do you feel uh, an affinity? Because you've, you've yeah. picked some great films. I here. think, well, we're, we're, well, three of us from art school, and that's always a bad oh, thing. Oh, I see, okay. But oh, I, we, <laughs> I, know. I, think, I think the music's always <laughs> been like, yeah, the music's always <laughs> been quite cinematic. Um, certainly, I think the, the genre that we came from uh, in, the, in the kind of 97 was, was lent towards the cinematic and I, it's just a natural place to go I think. I think yeah. music and uh, emotions and film all just stick together in one. They are, they happy, are all, they're all entertainment bogey. as well. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure I agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> so, is this, this has been a logical step then, because starting off, and now you just want to take all technologies, all medias, throw them together and assault the crowd. I think we're just going to be greedy, yeah, just very greedy. Uh, it's as much media as possible. Right. So now, this is my other point. A talking greed, you started off, did one album, mm -hmm. everybody owned it, literally. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, you know, I've got to be careful because I'm talking to you now, but it was a quite a safe album. Probably not for you at the time. Maybe not at the time, doing, but yeah. But it, it became a happy yeah. That's tr I suppose, in retrospect, it's become a bit um, coffee table, I guess. Is, I wasn't going to say that. Yeah, I know, but you were skirting around it. Uh, um, which is a shame because th those things happen, which is why we've had to sort of take measures. Right, <laughs> drastic. <laughs> Decisive. It's exactly why we've had to take measures because as soon as something becomes sort of musically a bit spent um, yeah. or a bit ubiquitous and, a, and it just becomes sort of meaningless and we were sort of becoming X at the time was for us a really 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 strong and original sounding and, and I mean even dare I say sort of avant-garde sounding at the time yeah but then it kind of you just ended up in a a kind of loop where it's um, six underground and it sounds a bit like more Chiba and it all. Yeah. And it's not your fault that no, that, that not, happened. But I, mean I think we have we've taken the responsibility to go right. We have to distance ourselves from that as soon as we can culturally and change everything. Yeah, <coughs> which is a bit of an extreme move. 
Well, yeah, I mean, I think, I think you're quite brave because you're, you're battling against your past success, mm. anyway. And like, I mean, it's only a, a coffee table or a cliche because it's good. Because, you yeah, know, anything yeah, that, yeah. that many I mean, people yeah, buy. Yeah, the face is always on the coffee table. Mm. Is that a nice thought, the underside of coffee cups <laughs> heading, heading I think away yeah. all the time? I think it was played in one too many boutiques, but that's, yeah. you know, that's, that's the way it is. If, if it's something successful, it's always, you know, becomes a victim of its own success at some point. That's it. I mean, you mm. turn into a cliche because yeah. of its popularity. Well, I think that was the, the problem, really, is that it's okay, it's okay to do that, but then to be kind of persuaded to r repeat that is yeah. the real problem. So that's where we kind of went, well, we can't do that. There's no so way is it a conscious kind of decision? Right Very much. Don't that we again. Almost, yeah, we, it's, we, we're, we're habitual kind of changes. We, we want to, as soon as we've completed something, we'll, we'll then go on. However successful it was, we'll go, go on to change it. And that's, right. that's in our nature. It's almost the success itself causes us to change. It, it, it's a limiting process. Mm. You didn't fancy doing an oasis. That worked. Bosh. No, Do that no, that, that, that just seems the death of music in, in our book. I mean, and if the, you know, if this is a, is a huge success. You know, we're going to come back with country and western. Yeah, right. That, Bluegrass that's music. Yeah, that's mm. a pledge. Morris dancing Cajun, reinvented. Yeah. So yeah, mm. go, go buy records, and we will definitely do country and western. <laughs> well, <laughs> the one thing I was going to ask is. Uh, when I first heard it, I was going to interview you guys, I was going to say, how are you going to deal with that, you know, the backlash mm. of that success? But then after poking my nose around a little bit, you've got your own studio. Mm -hmm. uh, you seem to pick kind of innocent young women and offer to remix their music. An accident, I don't think so. That's not that uh, innocent. No, no all women though, they mostly. They might pretend to. Placebos. Borderline. So exactly. And uh, you've done film soundtracks, you've done advertising soundtracks as well. Mm -hmm. Is this... Did you guys ever sit down and go, right, well, we can't just release an album and it'd be that big again, or you can't guarantee that, so we're going to infiltrate and take over? Not so much infiltrate and take over as um, support ourselves, to be sort of brutally okay. honest on a, on a about practical. it. There was a kind of, well, with this, we all have to actually live, and um, how can we do that? Yeah. So right. I suppose we can, that, I th that I th was yeah. it. Yeah, I, th I think we... The, the, a lot of music, uh, people you know, think we're going to be huge and, and all they want to do is, is professionally be inside that, that uh, idea of being in a band. But yeah. for us, a band is one part of what we do. We're, we're, we're people who it are is, creative. It's, it's kind of a small kind of part when you take all yeah. the, You've got your own record label as well. It, is, it's kind of, it always takes priority when, when, it's, when, when, you know, when an album's coming out. But other times, it, you know, some, you know, we, there's four people in the band and someone wants to be like, you know, writing a book or... Mm. Or making a film, or right. you know, it's, it's quite a creative collective. So it, it wasn't a conscious decision. This was because I wondered whether it was maybe we can't achieve that level of success with I an album alone. I so we're going to. I think it's more out. that we didn't want it. We've never been. We never wanted that level of fame. I think. I think the most interesting work is always done by outsiders, and we mm. always maintain the outside. I think in our work. Very much, yeah. Right. Uh, and I d even though we, d we don't aim to be small, <laughs> I think we aim to be as big as as it can be. But at the same time. I think we have a perspective of, you know, from an underground, that, right. that you know, work is essential when, when it, when it, when it's in a critical, um, you know, the audience is a critical mass, mm. yeah. and if it gets over that, it just becomes a, a, a circus. I think, I yeah. think we're, the way we see it is by doing that stuff, we can allow sneaker pimps to be exactly what it, what we want it to be. Yeah, you, you must rather be than sneaker pimps becoming this kind of thing where we go, oh, quick, let's knock out another six underground. That will yeah. make us a bit of money. It's like if, if we. Did I just spit on you then? No. Okay. I, I, I would have brought that on air <laughs> or not. In, though, for you know, just for me. Or saved it and framed it. All oh, right. But it's, it's, it's that kind of thing. And it is a bit mucky to sort of look at the things that we do specifically right. to survive <laughs> in a way. But um, that's the thing we do in order to make sneak prints the kind of purer yeah. side of it for us artistically.